well, should they be able to see it? So please let us know right away if you can't see the webinar. And can everybody hear me clearly? I hope so. This is Elizabeth. If there's a problem with either audio or visual, please email Nora right away. And she'll, we'll, we'll hold the fort. Or we'll stop the train, whatever. Whatever analogy I'm trying to find. Okay, so hi everybody. We are so excited to have such a great um, and robust network of provider, of you know, um, partners here with us today. Um, I noticed already a huge number of people have replied that they're on the line. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to join us and just to prep through some talking points that we can use on our legislative visits over the next couple of months. Um, so we structured this outline just to do like do a, a sort of level setting to make sure everybody's on the same page about what's CHA and our achievements. And then we wanted to really sort of talk about why this is such an important program and how to make the case to our legislators and um, you know administrative officials that we'll be speaking with and staff that we'll be speaking with. And then we'll just talk briefly about like the current state of our funding, just to remind everybody, and then talk a little more about the need for that state funding. So hopefully this is an okay order for our presentation. So first of all, just to remind everybody, what is CHA? Um, so we are a statewide network of community-based organizations. We, since November 2010, when we first launched statewide, we've served 194,000 New Yorkers, almost 200,000 New Yorkers. We've recovered $14 million in for consumers. We're sure that we have recovered much, much more, but not all of everybody is not so good at putting data entry. So <laughs> that's just a reminder to you all how important it is whenever you make a bill go away or whenever you get someone coverage to, to enter that information into the database. Um, we've provided assistance through two methods, the helpline and then one of them you can see those numbers there. And then we've done lots of community-based presentations explaining people about their health care rights and how to get health insurance. And we do all of this in 11 languages. And we've helped consumers in all 62 counties in New York State. Um, here's just sort of a map that kind of shows us, you know, the CHA network. And we're serving, we are serving, count, you know, every single county in New York State. Um, although some groups are working super, a lot harder. And as you can see, Chautauqua and Cataraugus right now are basically uncovered with the, from a community-based based organization. But clients in those counties do all the time call the helpline. So we have two ways for people to get um, services. It's kind of a hub and spokes model as we've talked about it. Number one, um, people tend to come to community-based organizations who are lower income and sometimes seniors. So Medicare, Medicaid beneficiaries tend to go to our local community-based organizations, you guys. And then commercial people, because we're listed on the explanation of benefit, that insurance company bill that says, oh, you went to a doctor, that, that notice has our phone number at the end. Um, here at CSS, and so folks call that helpline centrally, and that helpline gets around 20,000 calls a year. So we're really taking a lot of calls. Not every call becomes a consumer, a client, but we do get a lot of calls on the helpline. And as you can see, the the red is you know commercial. 50% of the calls on the helpline are commercial folks, and that means people who got job-based coverage. Um, one of the things to really stress when you're meeting with upstate legislators is that, you know, child is that 47 percent of our clients are, you know, live throughout the state. 13 percent live on Long Island and 40 percent live in New York City. So we're doing a good job sort of hitting the folks around the state, although even though we don't have community-based organizations in every county and some community-based organizations are sort of stuck serving many, many counties and it's a big burden for them because there isn't all that much money. Um, now, pivoting to when you're talking to a New York City representative, you might want to say, hey, CHA is only serving, you know, 24% um, uh, of the folks that CHA serve speak languages other than English. Those numbers should go up. If we had more money, we could ro more robustly serve our partners in, in more partners in New York City, or we could serve more people of color um, that is more representative of the state, um, or we could serve, you know, so this is just gives you a sense of you know, number one, it gives you a sense that we actually do, even with a very low level of money, have been able to serve a lot of diverse um, constituents, you know, by income and age and race and language. But if you were talking to a downstate legislator, you might want to say, hey, we could do better with more money and serve more diverse groups. And then again, if you're talking to an upstate legislator, you say, look, 
we aren't just a New York City program, even though CSS and downstate agencies are fiscal conduit, we really are serving the rest of the state. The next thing that we thought was helpful is just to show, again, you know, this is the breakdown. We're one-stop shopping. You know, someone comes to CHA, doesn't matter what kind of health insurance they have, or if they have health insurance at all, we can help them. So 13% of the people come to us have no insurance at all. 4% have like union and other kinds of coverage or self-employed plans. 22% have like Medicaid or CHIP, and those cases are eligible for federal matching funds. And then 30% are commercial enrollees, and 31% are Medicare. We do all kinds of services. We help people get coverage. You know, uh, we help people get information about their health coverage. We help people with billing problems, accessing care, appeals. 61% of the consumers that come to us need help using or keeping their coverage, so it's not duplicative of Navigator work if you get that question. And then let's just talk a little bit about the I wonder, should we just have a pause on that, or should we keep going for the importance of job? Maybe get to the next one, okay. or maybe we'll just go all the way through. Also Amy for the next okay. And all right. we will unmute her so that she can add. Okay. So we'll just add a little. As soon as we hear from Amy, then we'll, we'll I'll keep going. And then when we hear from Amy, we'll open the lines up. So let's talk about the importance of job. Okay, so why is it important? Well, first of all, 1.6 million new people, New Yorkers, have gotten health insurance through the New York State of Health. Now, CHA services, those people, they don't get to go, like many of us on this phone call, to our HR department and have them solve a problem when the insurance company is in pain. Those people don't have an HR department. And when you call the New York State of Health, you know, marketplace, those call center guys are not prepared necessarily to help people, or in fact, it wouldn't be appropriate for them to be an advocate on behalf of consumers. They do baseline, you know, basic, you know, um, help, of course, they're not unhelpful, but they are not advocates. They aren't trained on patients' rights. They don't know how to, um, you know, call with a consumer an insurance company, for example. So we act as this HR department for all these newly insured people, and then those people that work maybe in smaller organizations that don't have an HR department or people on public insurance like Medicare. Um, so we help we help individuals, families, employers, and their employees find and successfully use their coverage. And we're also one-stop shopping. So we, we help people uninsured and people who um, we make sure that people are not referred to some other helpline. We can do it all. We can do every kind of insurance comfort, coverage or no coverage at all. So another reason why it's important, we're all payer. It doesn't matter what kind of coverage you have, we can help you. Mom and pop shops can go to us. Small business owners and their employees often have nowhere to turn. They need help. We can be a guide and advocate to them. And our local CBOs, you guys know the local landscape. They can help people deal with um, you know, other non-health matters that might crop up. And we can step in to fix marketplace problems that do happen when they do happen. And then why is CHA important for small businesses? This is often a good thing to talk about when we're talking to members of the um, Senate or more conservative members of the legislature. You know, sole proprietors were always in small group coverage. They used to be able to benefit by being there, having their risk rated with the two or three million people that had small group coverage. Those sole proprietors, people that have a store all by themselves or married or have a small company with themselves and a spouse, now those guys are in the individual market. They don't have out of out network options anymore. They don't understand how to use this marketplace. We really can help them. Um, the Chambers of Commerce and the Small Business Serving Groups have a ton of those sole proprietors. We were able, for those folks that are members of CHA who are members of, who, are, who belong to Chambers, we really can help, um, you know, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis to help you know, small employers learn about tax credits, learn how to use the small business marketplace. It's not called the shop anymore. Sorry about that typo. And also assist, empl assist employees when they face problems with their health insurance. OK, so now here's the ask. Did a drum roll, please. This is what you should talk about when you're saying what your ask is. OK, our funding expires in, the 20, in 2015. We've served almost 200,000 people in three years. That funding is gone starting this summer. It's le absent legislative action. There are 21 community-based groups and small business serving groups that will either need to lay off or redeploy staff. Talk about your staff and, you know, how this, this can be somewhat of a, you know, think of the, the many legislators might want to think about this as a jobs program. People are employed as a result of this money. 
Um, and consumers will not be able to get local services necessarily. They can help them, you know, troubleshoot their, shoot their health, plan, health plans. In addition, that helpline that answers 20,000 calls a year, that's going to, you know, we will have to shut that down. Those calls will have to go elsewhere, um, and we will have to be removed from the explanation of benefits. So it's really important to fund us. Um, we can show, you know, legislators how the funding, you know, has been so up and down. And so it's really important. And to date, we've always been able to benefit from the state regranting federal funding. There is no more federal funding after June. So we really need the legislature to step up. And these funding cycles really affect our productivity, as you can see on this chart. And then, of course, the Small Business Assistance Program was completely defunded um, in June of 2014. And since then, you know, we have a few chambers left in our network, but not really very many. And the productivity for small business, helping small businesses, has really, really gone down. So looking forward, um, the federal funding, again, that federal HHS funding is going to expire in June and September 2015. CHA is, thank goodness, in Governor Cuomo's executive budget at $2.5 million. It's really important to give a big shout out to our CHA specialists, the Legal Aid Society, Empire Justice Center, and Medicare Rights Center. Thank you for helping us um, convince the executive um, that how important this was. But now we need the state legislature to do their bit. Governor Cuomo's done his bit. He's put in an opening bid of $2.5 million. We really want the state legislature, of course, to support that $2.5 million, but frankly, we really need them to increase it to $5 million so we can go back to doing huge volumes of cases like we were doing before. At one point in 2013, we were doing 65,000 cases a year at our high point. Um, so we need a solid presence of these CHA CDOs and small business serving groups in communities across the state, and we need a robust helpline that can help people with professional staff, not just volunteers. Um, I think this is, you know, really we'd like to reinstate those chambers of commerce and other small business serving groups. We have some already. We really need a stronger business in our current counties, especially CDOs in those upstate counties who cover such large geographic areas. And um, we really would like more resources to be able to do consumer education. So here's the, the, fund, the activity, advocacy activities. Obviously, there's um, yesterday was a budget hearing. We submitted to that testimony on behalf of CHA, which I'm sure nor has sent around to everybody, um, or we'll be doing so by the end of today. Um, we'll, we have a, the days we're having our webinar, then we're going to have this lobby day on the 10th, and then we're going to have district meetings um, the 17th and the 20th. We really need you guys to lead those. And then on the 25th, we'd like to go back to Albany and the 10th and the 26th. Um, we will only get this state funding. Child will only survive if you all participate in a really dedicated way. If you guys don't care about this program, the legislature sure ain't. And that, we really need you guys to go out and, and, and fight for us. So we, final summary. We shut down if we don't get this funding. We need $5 million to flourish, 2.5 to survive. Tell a story about a constituent you serve. Say how you help them. This, you know, maybe it's even someone that that legislator referred to you. Talk about your relationship with your legislative constituent services staff, how you are supporting them, how you sent them flyers about it. If you haven't, leave a bunch behind on this visit when you do your local district visit. Um, profile a story of a constituent from their area, if you possibly can. You know, people need help with their insurance. This stuff is hard. Um, our, our funding that we've gotten for CHA is highly cost effective, given the numbers of New Yorkers we're serving, 200000 for a couple million bucks, you know, over the last couple of years, it's an amazing amount of work. And we're really proud of it, and we need that legislative support. So we have some additional talking points at the end. You all have received this PowerPoint. Um, you know, it just sort of, this one just shows, like, we win 66% of the time when we fight for someone, like for preauthorization. It shows all the different types of services we help people with. You might want to refresh, you know, re, re, you know check all the other slides out. Talks about all the different kinds of specialists we help people get. Talks about how we win our appeals 76% of the time. That's really important. Talks about the different health plans we help people with. Um, then we also have this additional sort of mini service for a couple of months to help people with their tax credits. So if you start hearing about these Form 1095As from the legislators, CHA is the helpline to help people um, deal with those marketplace forms. We're fielding 200 calls a day just for this work. It's very short-term funding again. 
And then just one last thing, if they say, well, don't you have these navigators out there? We are navigators, just remind these legislators, navigators are not funded to provide consumer assistance beyond enrollment. And in fact, there was a national survey of 6,000 navigators that found 9 out of 10 navigators for poor people coming back for post-enrollment help with medical bills, prior authorization, finding providers. Um, just remind them that, you know, our helpline number is on the explanation of benefits that the consumers receive. So we're not getting, you know, enrollment. We're also getting all this post-enrollment people who have insurance are turning to us. And frankly, absent the funding for child, it's unclear where the navigators would refer consumers when consumers turn to them for help. Um, this is just sort of an explanation of funding grants and how it's so fluctuating. Um, and this just shows how the last time we had a fluctuation, fluctuation of funding, you know, our, our child cases decreased by 77% in child cases and a 61% decrease in helpline cases. And that's it. Um, too bad Nora isn't on here, too. I think I'm going to just keep this summary up. I think it would be really great maybe on this call for people to talk about different stories that they would like to tell their legislators. So um, I'm going to put you guys all back on speaker. We're going to unmute. How do we do that? Um, here? No? Oh, oh, goodness me. OK, so we're going to unmute everybody. Here we go. We're unmuting. Hang in there. We're unmuting everybody. Just taking a minute. Sorry. Unmuting. Unmuting. I'm okay. You haven't received the PowerPoint because uh, we were doing some uh, adding some slides until the last minute, but but after the after the call, I will certainly send it to you. Hi guys, um, does anybody have some thoughts, feedback, any more supplies, materials you think you're going to need? You're going to, when you're lobbying, you're going to have a one pager, you're going to have a sheet that shows how we served, you know, the numbers of clients we served by every single county. You're going to have last year's annual report. What else, Nora? What else are you going to have in the lobby sheet? Maybe some press materials? Uh, cases by county. Cases by county, I just said that already. You said that? Um, and other good stuff. So, did, any reactions, thoughts? Hello? Hello, this is Lanika from ACR Health. Can you hear me? Hi, Lanika. Hi, thank you for the information. It's very helpful. I was just wondering, um, do we have any information on the particular politicians that we're going to see? Like, for example, um, how they've voted progressively, what their history is, and what they are in favor of? Yes, so thank you, Lanika, for the question. We are be, uh, make, putting together a schedule. Uh, that, ha that includes some of the appointments that you guys have made with your representatives, some others that uh, the specialists and CSS have been able to make with uh, even administrators. And uh, we're going to have for each one of the legislators a little like profile, a description of what you said, like the voting history, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to receive the sketch. We are finalizing but, it. So I but Lanika, in, for example, Syracuse region, you know, you should, before you come uh, to Albany, take a couple, take 20 minutes out of your incredibly busy day and do a little Google searching to figure out what your guys are doing in your local papers. You know, we don't know exactly every single, you know, of course we know the Syracuse Post Examiner, but we don't necessarily know every single local, you know, free paper or what people, what, you know, what the, what the vibe is about your legislators. And, and talk to your government affairs people to make sure you know that you know you know the, what they know about your guys. You know what I mean? So you don't. Want right. To, I think. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's definitely um, helpful. And I've actually started that. I was just wondering if we had any um, official information on the the representatives that we're going to meet. But yes, I've I've started that personally. Yeah. We we probably honestly you will know your electeds better than us. You will have a, I think a team leader. We'll meet, mm -hmm. and we'll cool. have like a schedule where we'll do a little bit meet, and then we'll like divide up. Yeah, so tomorrow we will be sending a tentative schedule. We have to arrange groups of between three and five people, and each one of you is going to be, of course, with the, with your elected. Uh, but then you might, we might ask you to join another group uh, out of your of your region in case it's needed. 
but uh, but if we and also the, the schedule that we're going to send tomorrow, it's hard for mm -hmm. us to arrange everybody, all the teams, and not make some, we may not identify if there's some overlap, for example, in appointments. So take a look at it and take a look at the appointments where we have um, proposed uh, you to attend. And if you have any objection or you want to go, there's a legislator that you really want to talk to. Tell, let me know and you will make the changes to the schedule. Yeah, please look at it right away and, you know, talk about it with your government affairs people because we could change it, you know? Okay, good to know. Thank you. All right, so Amy can't dial in. Are you fixing this? Okay, great. Um, anything else? Other people? Oh, wait. Wow. There's questions. Please email the PowerPoint. We're going to do that right away, Karen. Uh, funding will go to support, enhance, expand current Shaw networks. Tina, I guess that's a question. Um, so, do you guys want to, uh, Tina, do you want to talk about that some more? Do you think I didn't do a good job of explaining that? Tina, are you still on? Oh, you didn't enter your pin, Tina. Naughty girl. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and Stacy is not able to answer a qu ask a question by phone. You can now. We didn't undo your little pin thing. Are you there? Oh, okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I have a quick question. Um, because every every quarter we submit our stories for CHA, um, uh -huh. I know that some of our cases or clients have been called to do a story. Is there any way that we can get a copy of some of the stories that were done? So rather than, you know, um, just giving a verbal story, we can actually leave something for them for a story that's from our area? Yes, so in, in some cases, you, uh, your clients may have received calls that there's not a written story. It was just a follow-up from your, from your uh, case summary. But if we have any written stories that, that come from your agency, we, we let you know. Do you, I think one thing that would be great is for those of you who have been, I mean, hopefully all of you have been submitting those, them. go back to your last couple of, um, you know, submissions and print those stories out for yourselves and tell those stories in these legislative visits. Or ask your staff. If you're going and you're not the person that's doing the day-to-day -day work, ask your staff, what was the most compelling story that came in last week? And tell that story. There's nothing more compelling for any legislator, any staffer, than hearing about a real constituent's experience. What we do and what we tend to put in the packets is sort of the big spread from the Syracuse that I think ACRO Health got. That's such an impressive spread. We do a guy out in Long Island, actually, Stacy, who had a, call, a surprise out of network bill and was profiled in the New York Times. Um, we I send you on those uh, newspaper ads. Yeah, we uh, stories, newspaper so, stories. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we can we can add those newspaper stories, but if there's ones that you think are really good that you're aware of, let us know. We'll add them too. But um, is that helpful, Stacy? Yes, I, I just thought if you had something written up already that I could use that. But I could I can go back to the um, to the stuff I submitted. Yeah, um, I, no, it, it, uh, uh, we, we, have a, we have a new Hickfany story booklet that we can send you guys the link to um, that has a lot of great stories, many of which might have come from you all, um, but it's a Hickfany story book, and they will be up, the, yeah, Healthcare for All New York will be up the day before handing that around. Uh, so say yeah, because we received a lot of stories. We received like two two stories from each one of you, right, during the, the year. But not all of them end up in the publication. Uh, so that's why, even though you may have sent two, we don't have the two stories necessarily written and ready to be uh, distributed. Okay, no but, problem. But if you want, we can work with you in terms of shaping the 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 the, the story to, on how to present it. Would you like that? No, that's fine. I could do it. I just knew that I had one client that actually did get a call from Cha to do a story and sent a picture and everything. So I thought maybe if that was available, and that was, you know, just a few months ago. I think it was a few months ago. Um, so I thought if you had that, I could take it. If you remember the name of the client, we'll get it for you. Okay, no problem. And I, and I would follow up on that. Um, now, Anna Gaudi 
Um, that's a great point. I'm not, Anna, where are you from? Do we, do we know? Anna, are you on the line? Independent Living Center. Oh, great. So do you want to, why don't you say your comment? I think it's really a good. One of the benefits that people say to me over and over again, including from the navigators, is that CHA advocates can help those on Medicaid, Medicare, which they can't do. So I've gotten a lot of referrals because of the Medicare aspect, which is a great asset to the elderly and also the disabled. Great. Great point. Other, other talking points that people think we should be emphasizing. I mean, you guys are really articulate and great, you know, messengers for this program. Hey, this is Becca with me through. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, too, besides the Medicare plan, which I think is great, is that CHAL also helps those who don't qualify for insurance through the marketplace, and so I think that's a big group of folks who um, aren't helped by navigators, per se. And another thing I was going to raise is that we are trying our best to find someone who's helped through the CHAL program to come with us to Albany um, to be there for the visits, and so that person can hopefully share their story in person, um, so hopefully we can make that happen by then. That's amazing. Can other groups think, uh, find a, a client that might be able to come with them? Is that possible? Well, just think about it. <laughs> other thoughts, other things? Is Amy on yet? Do we have to do? Uh, I'm not seeing Amy. Okay. I am on. Did you need? But I'm assuming you cover. Did you cover what I was going to talk about? Um. No, why don't you just say what you were going to say? We can hear you. Okay. So sorry, everybody. I had a meeting that ran over trying to um, get funding for CHA from the assembly, and then I couldn't dial in, so I'm on myself. Um, so I think that Elizabeth or Nora probably covered this, but I wanted to sort of emphasize the points on what to do when you're talking to upstate legislators and senators. And one thing to think about when you're talking to Republicans um, senators, especially upstate and assembly members, is that they're they're not fans of the Affordable Care Act. So, in a way, the message might need to be slightly adjusted to sort of focus more on the work we do. Uh, sort of not not to say that we don't do any work on the exchange for people who have QHPs, but to make sure we're distinct from the exchange. We're not about the exchange. Um, for this purpose, and really emphasize that CHA's all-payer program. I know someone just mentioned the Medicare, um, and emphasize that you know people who seek our help are also people who have insurance through their employers, who might just have large group or small group insurance, like somebody who works for a large company, and that they also come to us. Um, and it's also you know for, for the people who don't have an employer to turn to when they're having, you know, this HR point that Elizabeth made, which I am now on board with. Um, the people who are mom and pop shops or small business owners and their employees, they don't have anywhere to turn to when they're having trouble accessing insurer, their, their services um, for their insurance company. And CHA is their only advocate and guide. Um, and the other thing, and I'm sorry if I'm reiterating stuff, but you know, you guys all know the landscape, the local landscape. You know the services that are available for CHA, but you also know what's available for people with other issues that come up. So once people are linked up with CHA, they can get refer referred for other issues that invariably come up. I'm sure you've seen this. Somebody brings you an insurance issue, but they happen to mention a housing issue because you know everything's about their finances and they're having trouble affording their insurance and their housing. And you might be referring them to a local housing provider. So there's there's a real great local networking ability of CHA CDOs. Um, and the other thing we CHAs can sometimes do is when navigators aren't able to do this when it's when somebody's already enrolled but they have a glitch in their insurance, you know, we're able to fix those problems because we have good relationships with the state. So so those are sort of the points I thought were good to think about when you're talking to legislators um, upstate and the Senate. And then in terms of why we need to expand, you know, as we talk about the 2.5 million that we have now in the budget, but we're looking for we're really getting back to the 5 million that we were at our peak. Um, Elizabeth, I'm sure, mentioned a bunch of things, but you know, if you look at the CHA maps, there are four counties that don't have any CBOs. Um, there are CBOs that are covering a number of large counties geographically, and 
really if we had funding they could cover a probably a smaller geographic area with more intense more robust services and really be able to reach everybody and and we could you know spread and make sure that we sort of have rich services where they're needed um, so just a stronger presence in our in our communities that we would also be able to reinstate the chambers of commerce that we had so many of um, and the small business serving groups and that's a really important point for to make to the upstate legislators um, and you know, be, be able to reach these small businesses and individuals in ro remote and rural areas. And finally, one thing that we haven't had as much ability to do is really educate consumers who are newly insured about how to use their insurance. And I think we all know that a lot of the calls we get could be avoided if people had more information and more knowledge and more power around how to use their insurance. And they would be able to advocate to some self-advocacy even. So those are so sort of the points I wanted to make, and I apologize again for being late to the call. Well, that was really great and helpful, Amy. Um, Tina, I think you're finally unmuted. Do you want to ask your question in front of everybody? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Oh, Go good. Ahead. Okay. <laughs> it's very. It's a very specific question. Um, there, and I, because I was watching the hearing yesterday, the the question is when I'm meeting with our legislator, um, particularly Senator Seward. Are we asking not just for $5 million to keep the work going, but to sustain the existing network that we have, rather than asking, and, and asking the legislators to give direction to the state health department to keep the money into the current existing network, rather than opening it up for open, an RFA open competition and starting all over? It was very, it's a very pointed question. Sure. So the, it would continue to go through CSS because it was it's a, it's a named appropriation or a named budget line. It's a lined budget I, item. But then CSS would reprocure you guys, presumably. You know, we would probably not make you go through the whole RFA process, and then we would open up to more groups. Like we used to have 37 uh, chambers of commerce in our network at this high right. point when it was, we had 5.7 million dollars. We'd like to get a lot of those chambers back. Um, you so, know, chambers really are important and influential members of the community. They reach a lot of people that, who are underserved, actually, for insurance, because so many small employers are just struggling with health insurance costs. So we'd like to get a bunch of those guys back, and we'd like to get some more, you know, immigrant-serving groups downstate, for example, and, you know, to in increase our diversity downstate. In fact, I think downstate's sort of underfunded right now in the child program, to be honest with you guys. Um, in an effort to try to do as much of a reach to every county in the state. And I think sure. we need to really strengthen our reach in the western New York. Like we don't have, you know, Chautauqua and Cataraugus, for example, covered. And I think, was it Warren? There's a couple other counties that we, we are, you know, just not in in the way we should, and Genesee, I think. So, and, 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 the, and the governor's budget has CSS listed or indicated in the budget? Yes, that's it's already a CSS. At, at 2.5 million, and that's, okay. that's a great starting point. But we just would like more, you know. And frankly, it's sort of strategic. We we think number one, we'd like to have more because we really, really, 2.5 million is not enough to run this program oh, sure. on a basis. But also because we don't want the conversation to be about whether to have 2.5 million or not at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The conversation no, I, should. Be, yes. Should be. Should be know, more. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Any other thoughts, comments? Um, th this is Lanika from ACR Health again. Hey, Lanika. Well, I, you know, I had I had the honor of doing both CHA, and I'm now a navigator as well. Um, but as a navigator, I rely heavily, as it was um, pointed out before, on my advocates to help me get my consumers through the enrollment process. But I think there's another advantage to CHA. Um, the outreach component. What I'm finding as a navigator, even provider offices are having a hard time figuring and navigating through the system. So, you know, the the outreach component that CHA offers is a great asset with navigating people or helping people to understand what's going on, where to go, terminology, how to speak to your provider, how to advocate on your, your behalf um, for your provider. So that outreach component was a really great resource with helping our community figure out what's going on with all these new healthcare change, you know, changes and it, it, there's still a huge need for it. 
such an excellent point. And in fact, our number one source of referrals to CHA are healthcare providers. Number right. one. We, we were shocked. We really thought it would have been a navigator. They're confused. Then, They're so confused. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. really a huge resource for that. And in fact, one of the things I was thinking about was doing a similar PowerPoint to our friends at the Medical Society and asking them to, to please, you know, support our funding. So I have to, I have to get on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you. This is Becca again from Make the Road. I'm just wondering, should we be asking for them to have more money specifically for outreach and education, or like, is it better to focus on what CHA is currently funding? Um, definitely talk about outreach and education. I think that's important. Um, it's always a little ambivalent about funding that, but you know, you can do that with CHA funding as long as you make your deliverable. We try to structure the deliverables in a way that you know you have time to do that outreach. You're great. Other thoughts, other comments, or should we quit while we're ahead? It's only a 40-minute call. Everybody has, I'm sure, would love the extra 20 minutes, but that isn't to like stop anybody from saying anything else. Well, I just so we, to... I'm sorry. So just to be clear, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do work and listen to. We are going to get the list that we're going to actually visit tomorrow. Yes. Or sometime this week. Okay. So I'm going to send you this PowerPoint. I'm going to send again the content of the advocacy package that we're going to have for you all on okay. February. And I'm also going to say I'm also going to send the schedule. It's a preliminary schedule. It's really for you to look at it and see if we have done a good work distributing our like our forces around. So if you have if you have to make any change. We have time to do it between now and, and Friday. Thank you. Also, if you just, if you want to, if you for any reason you cannot join us on February 10th, but you can join us in any other day of the dates that are listed in the in the slide about the different activities. Let me know, and we will be happy to have you come with us to to up to visit legislators. Anything else, guys? Last call before I do my little closer. Well, I guess my closer is this. What an amazing group of colleagues we have on this phone. Thank you all so much. It's such an amazing program. What we do, you know, is so important for the state and for the people we serve. And, and just keep those clients in mind when you're dealing with a difficult, you know, legislator or staffer who's being snotty. Um, just, you know, hang in there. We are going to get this money. I really, really feel strongly it's going to happen, but it can only happen with all of you guys, you know, helping us um, do the outreach for it. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.